How to not be a Jujun on part 3. This video is a part 3 but you don't need to watch part 1 or 2 to understand this video. Also, this guide will be helpful for all classes and not just Archer. By the way, this video took a decent bit of time. So please leave a like and sub if you feel like it after watching the video. Also join the discord as we have weekly giveaways there. And I've already given away more than 200 million coins. So please join it. Now without wasting too much time, let's get into the video. First, I'll be talking about how you can be a Jujunon. Not using puzzle solvers, meaning you fail puzzles or waste too much time. Not knowing secrets, being toxic, overestimating yourself. Jujunons are always fighting over who should play Archer. The main thing you should note is, you don't deal a lot of damage because you play Archer. You play Archer because you deal a lot of damage. Meaning, Archer is the highest damage source. So you should give the class to the higher Kata player. Also, Burrs has other advantages. With Burrs, you can still use the Flower of Truth and Bay VAT without losing a lot of damage. You also get a lot of passives, which greatly improve your overall survivability. Your Juju Short Bow should have all the good stuff, like Overload 5 and Power 6. Hot Potato Books are a must, don't forget to 5 star it and add the Spiritual Reforge as it is not only good for damage, but also distracts the enemies with decoys. You should add Vicious and Fumings if you can afford them. Also, you can choose between two ultimate enchants, Soul Eater and Duplex. Duplex is better for non-master mode floors, as it gives a lot of extra DPS, especially if you play Archer. But it's really expensive, so it's not worth it unless you solely grind F7. Soul Eater is a must-have for master mode, as most mobs there have a lot of strength. There are three major power stones you should go for. Beating Heart, it's really cheap but gives decent stats. Magma Urchin, slightly more expensive but worth it. Scorched Book, really expensive but is the best power stone at the moment for DPS. Also, tune your stats to get attack speed. 67% attack speed is the max for Juju. The best equipment set in my opinion is Vanquished Gashed Cloak, Thunderbolt or Molten Necklace, Gauntlet of Contagion and Molten Bracelet. All items with the Strength or Fortified Reforge. Also, try to get ones with good attributes. Always remember to 5 star your armor. Also use the Ancient Reforge and Hot Potato Books on your armor. Your armor set should have the following enchants. Also, try to get high tier ferocious mana on your armor if you can afford it. Also, use the golden head of the floor you are doing. Your first armor set should be two pieces of shadow and a skeleton master chestplate, if you can survive that is. Cause it gives similar stats to zombie knight chestplate and has a 5% arrow damage boost. You could also swap the boots for high tier terror boots. Next, you should go for the shadow assassin chestplate. Later, you can go for max overlegs instead of shadow. And finally, the best setup should be Necron Chestplate, Max Overlegs, and Terror Boots. Or Necron Chestplate, Necron Legs, Max Over Boots. All reforged to Ancient with the golden or diamond head of the floor you are doing. Use a jellyfish pet when drinking pots, as it increases its effectiveness. Also, get a spirit pet if you don't want to get a 299 score S run. The best pet for EHP is Baby Yeti. Whale used to be really good, but it has been nerfed to the ground. The best damage pets are Skeleton, E-Drag and G-Drag. The best pet items are either Shelmet or Tiger Plushie. Items that you must buy or own are Ornate Zombie Sword for healing, Aspect of the End to TP, A Conjuring or Super Boom TNT to blow up walls, and spirit leaps. These items aren't compulsory but you should go for Ice Spray Wand to freeze enemies that move fast like Shadow Assassins, Gyrokinetic Wand if you tend to miss your Ice Spray, and in floors with too many enemies in the boss room like F6, F7 and maybe F5. Aspect of the Void with Ether Warp which is a must have for floor 7 and above. 
You should try to get it once you start grinding F6 in my opinion. The best combination in my opinion is switching between bouncy and armor shred arrows. Bouncy for multi-target and armor shred for single target. But if you don't want to be bothered, then I would recommend using icy arrows as they give good damage along with a slowdown effect. The best mods are NEU for dungeon map and chest price checker, Skytails for puzzle solvers, Optifine and Patcher for 99% lag reduction, SBA for the QOL features, Dungeon Secrets mod to know the location of all secrets. Some optional mods are Cowlection and SBE. If you're too lazy, you could use Batline Client as well. For this trap room, blow up the crypt here. Use your silver fish pet and start breaking the blocks until you can get to the chest. For this variant, you will need the same setup as before, but don't forget to use a rabbit hat. Jump down here and flick the lever. You can use the Super Boom TNT as a block to jump out of the pit, or just do this. Then try to get to this ledge here. Then break the block and claim the chest. And you basically completed the room. You can also claim this chest if you want to. Some puzzles, like box puzzle, can be cheesed by breaking the glass. Or you can use solvers to easily do it. There are solvers for every single puzzle. For the teleport maze, go through the pads diagonally. But if you can find one, I would recommend going through the green one. For ice path, I would recommend sneaking, as if you are too fast, there's a high chance you will fail. For bomb defuse, you need to learn how to ghost pick first. Basically, you quickly swap your pickaxe with another item. That will create a ghost pickaxe, which can then instantly create ghost blocks. After that, you can just follow the steps here. For the King Midas room, blow up the crypt and leave. But for some reason mine was bugged. If you guys know the reason, please tell me in the comments. Floor 1 is fairly simple. Just hide behind the pillars when he's shooting the balloons. If you can't tank them, as they can do some damage, especially in master mode. For floor 2, attack the priest as he is dangerous. Also, the warrior will try to take your aggro. You can also attack Scarf in the tunnel using AOE weapons. Floor 3 has two stages. For stage 1, split up and attack the Elder Guardians separately. For stage 2, stand in the center and just spam your weapon at the professor. For floor 4, get a decoy and leave it here for the spirit bats. Then start attacking the spirit mobs until the rim changes from coal blocks to sea lanterns. Then a spirit bear spawns, which you need to defeat to gain a spirit bow, which you can then use to damage Thorn. You should try to get the highest ferocity you can using full werewolf, a tiger pet, and maybe even ferocious mana. Also get someone to stun Thorn using a phantom rod or bone meringues. Also, you can find two circles, a fire one that damages other mobs and a healing one that heals you. For floor 5, just stand here and AOE spam the mobs. Also, you can use mods to check which level is correct, which can also be seen using the color in the ceiling. For floor 6, 
Just stand in the center and wait for the terras to start moving. Don't attack the golems until the terras start moving, unless you want to waste 30 seconds. For floor 7, watch this guide. I haven't really done it since the new changes. Also, try to get mods, find a perm party, and learn secret routes, as this floor is way sweatier than others. If you watched the video up to this point, I sincerely thank you. If you want to watch more videos like this, click the button on the left. If you want to continue watching my content, click the button on the right. And don't forget to leave a comment as I read all comments.